Hello everyone and welcome to another video and what is another episode of Saturday Tech Talk. I know, it's usually Sunday Tech Talk. Controversial. But tomorrow I want to dedicate the day to another episode of reviewing your gaming rigs because I've had so many requests on Instagram to continue the series. You guys seem to really like it as well. So I'll be focusing primarily on that tomorrow because next week I'm really quite busy so I thought I'd fit a lot more of your rigs in tomorrow instead if that's okay with you of course now on this episode of the tech talk I'm going to be talking about my previous video the Ryzen 3600 PC because a lot of you really didn't like the bio style motherboard I used in that rig and I've got to be honest I'm not quite sure why I opted for it either if I had to put that PC together again I'd probably use a B450 board perhaps something from a different manufacturer entirely. All I can say is, is that I've used Biostar on and off for a couple of years and generally never had any problems, but yeah, a B450 board would probably be the better option here. I did read a cool textbook article regarding the use of a B350 board and a Ryzen 3900X, and they found that that worked out pretty well. So you should have no problem with something like a 3600 on most B350 boards, providing the manufacturer has offered a BIOS update. I think that's why part of me chose a B351 because I was curious as to whether or not it would work out fine. And I just thought, you know, if you're upgrading from an existing Ryzen chip, you may not have to worry about upgrading your board as well if you've got a B350 board already. You don't have to go out and buy a new one, it should work. But yeah, considering I was building that from new, I think a better board. Uh, would have been a nicer choice and if I had to criticize myself a little more I think adding a front fan to that system would have been ideal getting some of those right angled SATA cables as well for the drives um, instead of bending the cables around a little bit and generally being a bit more delicate with my PC parts this stuff's been on my mind since I put that PC together I seem to be a bit heavy handed with it and the, the end result felt a little bit rushed so I think I needed to address that in this video because it's been bugging me. I probably had something on my mind and my brain wasn't quite working at full capacity, but there we go. Now the next thing I want to talk about is the Radeon 7, a very expensive AMD card that I think was reviewed as early as February this year. Well, now it's end of life according to Hexus here. Now it's no surprise considering the 5700 and 5700 XT have released and the Radeon 7 was never really recommended by a whole bunch of reviewers. Sure it was a capable card but it just didn't really make that much sense in the grand scheme of things. Now do you know that Pentium G5620, the first 4GHz Pentium chip from Intel that was supposed to release in the second quarter of this year? and I was really excited about it in last week or the week before's Tech Talk video. Well, it still hasn't been released, and we've still had no word on it. We're in the third quarter now, so I thought it may have made its way to a few shelves. It's still available for pre-order on Scan UK, but aside from that, I haven't seen it anywhere. I'm not sure if it's actually going to get released now. Intel might slip it into their lineup very quietly, but considering the 3000 series of Ryzen's are now out, well, it probably wouldn't make much sense if they were sticking to that sort of 90 to 100 pounds recommended retail price that seems to be up on their site. But who knows, we'll have to wait and see, still. <laughs> Next up, we have to say rest in peace to some of those old school Microsoft games that were included with operating systems such as Windows 7. You know, backgammon, checkers, things like that. Well, come the end of July, they will no longer be supported by Microsoft on Windows ME and XP. If any of you are running those OSs and really enjoy those games, well, tough luck. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what to make of that story. Just uh, take that for what it is. I'm sorry if you really like those games and still run with these old operating systems, but there we go. I say bring back Pinball, to be honest, because that was an absolute classic on, what was it, Windows XP. But I guess in this day and age, the market seems to have died down a little bit for multiplayer online checkers. But there we go. A little bit of sad news there for all of you old OS enthusiasts. Now finally I want to talk about the Nintendo Switch. There's a new version of it coming out very soon. 
the Switch Lite, it will cost 199 US dollars and it's entirely portable. Think of a Sony PSP, for example. Now, I'm very excited for this. I haven't actually purchased a Switch before, but the fact that this is entirely portable makes it all the more desirable to me. And I think I'll definitely pick one of these up to play a little bit of Zelda and some Mario on the go. Animal Crossing, when I was younger, was that, that was my jam. So I think I'll pick one of the Switch lights up, probably pick up the new Animal Crossing when it comes out in early 2020, and I'll be playing that bad boy everywhere I go. I think that's a pretty decent price, $200 as well. It should be a little bit cheaper here in the UK. And yeah, it, it's a console, it's not really PC related, but it certainly got me excited when I read about that news. Let me know if you're going to be picking one of those up too. Now last but not least, I want to talk about a new AMD card. It's a workstation card, a WX3200, a low profile offering that I certainly want to check out. Now I believe we reviewed one of these last year or so. Um, a WX2100 perhaps, or a 1200, something along those lines. And although not intended for gaming, I installed the gaming drivers anyway, and we had a pretty good time playing around with that one. This has been quite heavily requested, actually, so I think I'll probably pick one of these up. It comes in at around 200 US dollars, and I think we'll see what it can do in terms of both workstation tasks and games. And to finalise with a bit more personal news, I will have a, another Ryzen 3000 series build coming soon. We're going to be using the cheapest APU in the new lineup, the 3200G. So stay tuned for that as that build video should be up either later today or knowing my excellent record for procrastination tomorrow sometime. Oh no, not tomorrow. It's Sunday Tech Talk. Well, it's not because it's Saturday Tech Talk today. It's reviewing your builds tomorrow. So that uh, Ryzen APU build will probably be up either today or Monday. So, say, so, so, so stay tuned for that. Anyway, that's where I'm going to end today. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like on it. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Keep your PC builds coming over at Instagram at RGNHD if you want me to review or roast them. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.